Hello, my name is Martin Cordial, and I am a writer, an internet writer, which which is the best kind of writer. And I'm here to tell you that writing is not something to be taken lightly. Uh, a pen is a dangerous instrument in the wrong. Did, did did you ever see Did you ever see that movie, The Dark Knight, with 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 the pencil? That's all. That's everything you need to know about the dangers of writing by 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 the common rabble. Okay, so it's important that only qualified professionals write. But rest assured, I, Martin Cordial, Esquire, PhD, have all the requisite certificates, and and I've got I've got this whole wall of of hashtag literary accolades to demonstrate that I can handle this dangerous, messy business of writing in a way that's responsible, and appropriate, and dignified. That's what Martin Cordial's all about, and 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 today's a special day. Today's an exciting day because today we're gonna do something different. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna combine my my literary expertise with the power of democracy. Uh, you all on Twitch today, uh, Rega, Advar, Hadar, Seventy, Z- Zasta. Fabian, you all have the power to choose the next Martin Cordial story to be continued into the future. Jorge, that's right. Uh, And uh, because over the past four episodes of Martin Cordial, we've written four stories, or the beginning of four stories. We've written The River of Chocolate Dreams, and the exciting cosmic space ventures of Jackson Space Boots, and we've written Gas Troll, and we've written Cold Blooded. The beginnings of three different stories. One of them today will be continued. Uh, so the way we decide which of these will be continued is with the power of democracy. I believe there should be, in the bottom right of the Twitch stream, a button that you can press that should allow you to um, vote. Is it working? Let me know if it's working or if it's not working. There should be a magic little button. Uh, can you guys see that vote button? It's in the bottom right. You should be able to click it, and then you'll be able to choose one of these four stories. I don't see any votes coming in. Are you guys able to press the button on the Twitch stream? Well, while you look for it, I'll describe the stories that we've got so far. So the first story that we wrote, The River of Chocolate Dreams, was a... Uh, what, what was it? It, it? it was an exploration. It was a journey through memory. Um, it... It, it it was a it was a rumination on the past in which someone uh, was sucked through into their into their past uh, with this woman called Morgan and this city called Sasporo Town and then we go into like the childhood of this individual um, and and some of the tragedy in his past uh, and it was a sort of a strange dreamlike tale that didn't really sort of go anywhere in particular. But which could certainly continue to go somewhere, I'm sure. We could explore the past, present, and future of this character more, I think. Uh, the next story w- sort of ratcheted ratcheted the energy up a bit in the exciting cosmic space ventures of Jackson Space Boots. This was uh, the beginnings of a sort of action adventure science fiction story uh, with with our with our hero uh, heroine. Jackson Space Boots, um, which, uh, which I don't know, sort of came off to a slower start than we'd hoped, honestly, with, uh, with a crash landing on an alien planet. Um, we never quite got to find out what was going to happen next, but there's all manner of adventures and misadventures uh, that Jackson could get up to, I'm sure. So I think there are places we could go there. Gastrol is dark 
and industrial and strange. It's a bit like Alien 1 in that you've got all these sort of different people squashed together into this small space and there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of mystery with 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 discovery and and, and things being found um all sorts of possibilities there uh, our protagonist is louisa sashi uh and she's coming up against such individuals as the proctor treshan uh who's this very sort of uptight uh mysterious individual uh and the rather more pleasant uh engineer rain and then, in cold-blooded, our most recent episode, uh, we, we, we discussed lizards, we discussed reptilians, um, we, we, we were uh, playing with some conspiracy theories, some conspiracy tales, which was pretty fun. Our protagonist, Yamar, was a human sort of slave worker on, on Mars, building radio broadcasters for the reptilians, as you do, uh, and he was paranoid about the aliens... Uh, the lizards that were walking among him in human skin, uh, and he got caught at the end and found out that his best friend at work was actually a lizard all along, which is understandably uh, distressing to Yamar. Um, and he's just about to get sucked into the, the, the rebellion movement against the lizards, uh, along with uh, a rebel named... Uh, what was her name? Rasha. So those are the different, those are the different possibilities. Um, Alright, so it sounds like you guys have worked out the voting. Uh, what's it looking like? We've got we've got one vote for The River of Chocolate Dreams, one vote for Cold Blooded, and four votes. 67% for Gas Troll. I think that's, pro- I think that's convincing enough. Um, unless anyone's suddenly about to change their mind. I think we can close the vote, and I think we can continue Gas Troll. 12,000 feet. See, this story had a subtitle, which is probably why it's the best. Gastrol. Okay, let's close the vote. Uh, there's a button for that. End poll. So, I think it'll... Yep, official results. Gastrol wins. Uh, so now, we need to figure out what's happening (laughs) in... Uh, gastrol. So let, first, let's read what we've got so far, and we'll figure out what needs to happen next. We'll probably uh, edit as we go along. Um, all right, Gastrol, Twelve Thousand Feet by Martin Cordial and Stephen Kelly were uh, contributors to the start of this story. Uh, and anyone else who has thoughts and additions today uh, will also list up here because Martin Cordial always recognizes um, contributions. The story goes thusly. The engine growls disconsolately as it powers through the darkness. Ancient steel groans. Rivulets of grey water run down girder beams. Sashi blinks in the gloom, pinching pinching their nose, well her nose. We weren't sure about the gender at first, but uh, but, but Sashi's a woman. Uh, Sashi blinks in the gloom, pinching her nose at the smoggy air. Is it meant to sound like that? Sashi asks. Rain's white eyes hover in the shadows, joined by a broad checkerboard smile. The noise means she's working. When she's silent, then there's trouble, he says. How often is there trouble? Most every day, he laughs, but never something that I can't fix. I was born here on the gas troll, just near where you're standing, in fact. I came out blinking with the rivet wrench in hand. I learned to climb these ladders before I learned to walk. These engines I know better than my heartbeat. I've always treated old Troll right, and she'll treat me right, so don't you worry. She'll be fine, as long as I'm here. Rain smiles again and gets back to hammering. Sashi shakes her head and leaves the boiler room. She's still learning her way around the Troll. It's a structure designed for utility, not comfort. Machine, not human being. Yet here she is, 12,000 feet underwater, with only the troll to keep her breathing, and its crew to keep her company. Rain is the best of them. Sashi is still recovering from her run-in with the proctor, Treshan. She had stepped into his cabin whilst he scribbled intently at some age-stained papers. She was about to clear her throat politely, but was struck by the space Treshan had made for himself. Like a nesting bird, he had softened the irregular steel walls with papers, books, scholarly equipment. 
His lenses, brass stands, reading light, compasses, calipers, all perched precariously on humming pipes and junction boxes. Great intricate maps and diagrams were hung about, sealed in plastic to keep out the omnipresent damp. Before Sachi could clear her throat to say hello, Treshin turned suddenly. What are you doing? Who are you? He hissed, pulling papers to his chest protectively. Sashi took a step back. Sashi. Louisa Sashi. Subtech enlisted, transferred from Subdoc. Here to assist Engine Hand Rain for this quarter. Then you have no business here. His eyes gleamed cold behind his spectacles. Sashi paused for a moment, was tempted to push him, but she didn't know the Proctor's place on the troll. She had worked on a few smaller vessels, and none had carried men like Treshin. Anyone who wasn't working was dead weight, and as far as Sashi could see, Treshin wasn't working. Maybe he was funding? Rain was tight-lipped about the whole thing. Uh, and so we have all these sort of beginnings of questions and mysteries. Uh, there's a question of, like, who's funding this expedition, which might be a whole sort of thing. Um, and there's also the question of where they're going. So the idea, by the way, is that this is some sort of great uh, deep water, underwater vessel, a very large underwater vessel that that goes along the seabed, I suppose. This isn't like a submarine so much as something that actually physically uh, crawls along the bottom of the seafloor. Um, the use of the word troll doesn't actually make any sense, but it sounds cool. Uh, and so I think there's a high likelihood that this vessel and its crew will encounter some kind of strange, dark, secret thing here at the bottom of the seabed with 12,000 feet of water above them. Some kind of underground reservoir thing might be cool. This might be part of some kind of mining or archaeological uh, thing. Lots of possibilities. Uh, but that's where we're going now. Uh, Rega asks, what are girder beams? Um, I'm just thinking like large chunks of metal, big pillars of metal. Uh, yeah, Project 70 explains. I think it basically makes sense. And, and yeah, the, the, a, a troll is like a fishing net. And yeah, it, it makes no sense to, have to call this uh, a troll, because uh, it's not. Uh, but, uh, well, you know, maybe there is a fishing net on the back of, of the vessel. I don't know. Maybe they do some deep water fishing. I'm not sure. But we're calling it gas troll because it sounds cool. It's not a fish net, uh, but whatever. So... Um, one obvious thing that I think we should do right now, uh, is, well, yeah, I think that's the idea, Rega. like, there's, that, that there may be, like, scraping the bottom of the seabed, uh, for some kind of archaeological find, or some kind of mining find, mineral find, um, and that maybe could be described as trawling, perhaps, um, and yes, yeah, good to see that, that, that there is an oyster here, although apparently a haired oyster as opposed to a hairless oyster, which is terrible, uh, terrifying. Perhaps w the gas troll will uncover um, some kind of oyster at the seabed, head, hairless, or otherwise. Um, but I think the first most obvious thing we should do here is change the timing, because we've framed this interaction with Proctor Tretion as like a flashback, which I think is an unnecessary complication. I think that uh, Sashi should leave Rain and then go and meet, uh, Treshin. Um, so, uh, so Rain is the best of them. Um, Rain is the best of them. Uh, Sashi is yet to meet. The vessel's Proctor Treshin. So we we suggest at the we we suggest down here that like it's unusual for a man like Treshin to be on the vessel because he's like this weird sort of like academic priesty sort of guy instead of like an actual useful crew member. Um, but maybe we can actually frame that differently. Maybe uh, we should suggest that there's always some kind of a Proctor, some kind of a religious or academic figure on every vessel, just as for, uh, as some kind of standard practice for some reason, uh, maybe for some cultural reason in this culture, people want to have some kind of priesty person on board. That that could maybe be cool. Um, so he's like the sort of designated uh, priesty person, but he 
Um, he's a bit of a dickhead type <laughs> of one. Uh, so he's, he's yet to meet the vessels, Proctor, Treshen. Um, um, is yet to meet the vessels Proctor, Treshen. She had been. Rain warned her about that one. Um. Well, it would be more elegant to actually have Rain's warning up here, I suppose, wouldn't it? So don't, all right. So 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 we'll we'll have Rain warning Sashi about Treshen here in the first para. Um. So, Rain and Sashi speak, and then Sashi smiles. All right. So Sashi smiles and says. All right, I'll be back after lunch to help with the welding. Um, gonna go meet the Proctor Treshen. Rain's, uh, Rain's, uh, Rain's frown creases his, uh, creases his grease blackened brow. That's a fun sentence. Rain's frown creases his grease blacked brow. That's cool. Um, Uh, be careful around that one, Sashi, he says. Be careful around that one, Sashi, he says. Um, what, what should he say? I mean, he could just say, like, don't trust him or, or something, but we shouldn't be quite so direct as that. Um... What right? We should we should think of like a specific reason why rain uh, is um yeah no that's a good point Adva that yeah yeah it, uh, Sashi doesn't need to tell rain who the proctor is um I guess that's for the benefit of the audience but it doesn't yeah it doesn't really make sense for Sashi to say that um. Uh, and yeah, Mosa asks about Treshen. Uh, yeah, I, I think he, I think he is like some kind of weird combination between like an academic and a religious figure and a monk. I, I, I don't really know yet. I, I think, I think he's someone who knows things about whatever sort of weird secret we're about to uncover. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not clear at this point whether he's actually like threatening and sinister or whether he's just a bit uptight like he's the sort of guy who might seem like a bad guy now but who might later turn out to be uh, totally essential and, and, and a hero for having like knowledge that's helpful or something but I think at least this point we're portraying Treshen as, as someone to be uh, suspicious of um, so Sashi says alright I'll be back after lunch to help with the welding gonna go meet the proctor Rain's frown creases his grease-blacked brow. Be careful around that one, Sashi. Or, or may maybe it would actually be better if instead of giving, like, a serious warning, um, Rain could take a more sort of light-hearted approach, a characteristically light-hearted approach, and just say, hey, you know, he's got his bloody nits in a knot. He's, he's just, he's all antsy about stuff for no reason. Uh, so Rain takes it in a light way, but maybe Sashi in her, her f concurrent scene will be more uh, concerned about Treshen as like a serious threat. 
Uh, Oyster says, if you're scouring the seabed, you would need a proctor to say some sweet words to rebury the inevitable mounds of dead bodies you will find suspended in the cold darkness. Thousands of years of death down there. Yeah, no, that's that's great, Oyster. That's a good point. I think that's a perfect use for um, for our proctor. Um, and I think that could also apply, especially in the context of, like, archaeology. If this is, like, an archaeological vessel and they're uncovering, like, you know, old civilizations, I mean, they could be trawling for Atlantis, perhaps, you know? Um, and perhaps whatever Atlanteans we find will need to be uh, appropriately blessed and consecrated by our priest. Um... It actually would be fun to uncover a a forgotten underwater Atlantean city, and and there could be all manner of Lovecraftian sea monsters imprisoned down in the city, of course. Um, yeah, no, that's a sweet idea. Uh, okay, so just to unknot this paragraph, so Sashi smiles. I'll be back after lunch to help with the welding. Gonna go meet the Proker. Uh, Rain's frown creases his grease-blacked brow. Um, uh, Might want to step lightly around that one, Sashi, he says. Um, uh, Alright, so, so, um... What 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 interaction has Rain had with um, uh, Treshin? That's I I think I think Rain and Treshin are like totally opposite personalities. Like Rain, I think is a very practical, pragmatic, material based sort of a person, whereas Treshin is uh, much more interested in the abstract. Um, I want to step lightly around that one, Sashi. He says. Um, Uh, all he cares about, um, scrolls and old bones, um, it's probably wrong for Rain to say this here, but, but you can make an, you can express the sentiment that Treshin only cares, like, Treshin cares about the dead more than he cares about the living, perhaps. Like, perhaps the concern is that Treshin would be willing to sacrifice living crew members if he cares more about old, dead things that that, that are part of his studies. Um, Hadar says that Atlantis is cliche as fuck, and yeah, no doubt. I don't think we would, um, I don't think we would say Atlantis. Um, I still think an underwater city could be cool, like we'd we'd try to make it we'd try to give it some kind of flavor and twist that makes it not the same as Atlantis. But I, 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 look, I, call me old fashioned, but I still think ruined underwater cities are dope or have the potential to be dope. I I, I think we can try and find a way to make it feel fresh. Um, yeah, yeah. So so the thing that Rain could could say uh, is that Treshin is just useless because he's not working, he's not contributing in a practical way, and maybe that's all that. Uh, Rain has against uh, Treshin at this point. Um, um, yeah, uh, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, it, it also could just be as simple as Rain saying, "Hey, he doesn't like being disturbed." Like I, yeah. So, so all right. So, so might want to step lightly around that one, Sashi. Uh, I tried to. Um. Or, or we could just simply say. Uh, doesn't like being interrupted. Um, um, well, yeah, maybe that, maybe that's ominous enough. Maybe that's ominous enough. He doesn't like to be interrupted. I think that's appropriately vague. Um, Doesn't like being interrupted from his papers, <laughs> something like that. Um, Oyster asks, "Is there alcohol down there? Does Treshin drink? Has he seen some serious, unspeakable shit? Does he carry some weight of knowledge?" Yeah, yeah, that's that's quite possibly true. I mean, I I certainly think that 
Treshan knows things, and some of those things may be uh, dark and disturbing. Um, why is Sashi going to see him? Yeah, that we do need to get that across better. So I, I think the idea is that Sashi is a new crew member here. Um, and so she's just going around and meeting each of the crew. She's already met most or all of them, I think, except for uh, Treshan. And that's why she's going to meet Treshan. I mean, I suppose you could ask the question, why is she only meeting each of the crew now uh, when they're already 12,000 feet underwater? Like, surely... Surely, um, surely they would have met before they went down, or as they were going down. Like it would take time for this giant vessel to go underwater, I would think. Uh, but we'll we'll ignore that for for now. Um, and Rega asks, would a religious person have maps and stuff? Yeah, I I think we're keeping it vague. Like like I think this is somewhere between like a a priest and a monk and an academic, which which was sort of a, a vague thing, like back in the day in like medieval times. Uh, I thought. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we're keeping his exact position vague, but he's someone who knows things of arcane significance. Um, Three Spookud asks if this is different to the reptilian story. Yeah, we are continuing Gastrol, uh, which was selected democratically by vote. Um, alright, so, uh, so Rain warns Sashi about Treshin. Um, uh, Sashi... Sashi steps carefully um, down a damp metal corridor. She's still learning her way around the troll. It's a structure designed for utility, not comfort. Machine, not human being. Yet here she is, 12,000 feet underwater with only the troll to keep her breathing and its crew to keep her company. Rain is the best of them. Rain is the best of them, and as her, um, how do we describe him as a work partner? He's his colleague, superior, uh, um, and as the chief engineer, he's he's who she'll be spending most of her days with. Um, um, Sashi is yet to meet the vessel's proctor. Treshin. Every, uh, uh, how should we describe this? Every, every... Every gas troll, um... has a proctor on board. Um... on board as standard practice. Um, every gas troll has a proctor on board. Um, a standard practice required by the, uh, what should we call this mysterious, uh, uh organization? By the, uh, by the, by the, by the board, um, uh, by the Ooh, organ. That's a good name. Required by the, um, by the maritime, <laughs> the maritime organ. Oh, uh, by the, uh, I mean, I mean, council. I'm thinking some kind of, like, overseeing regulatory body, uh, that has both a sort of governmental, but perhaps some kind of vague, uh, arcane, religious, academic flavor. I I every gastrol has a proctor on board. Uh, a standard practice required by the, um, by the, uh, by the, by the, yeah, we'll leave Maritime Organ for now. I'm sure we can think of something cooler later. Um, 
what's happening in the comments. Um, an acronym like MOB. <laughs> yeah, well, we had a fun acronym in the lizard story with um, with R for the anti-reptile resistance. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I don't know. I, 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 acronyms are good when you want to withhold information. I think in this case, we want to give some sort of flavor to what this organization is. Um, assembly, Federation, yeah, those are good, Kelly. Um, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. A standard practice required by the maritime organ. Um, every guest troll has a proctor on board. A, sta a standard practice required by the maritime organ. Um, frankly, Sashi has little patience for paper pushes uh, and rosary <laughs> fiddlers. <laughs> is, is there a good equivalent term for, uh, I don't know, religious persons? Um, Sashi has little patience uh, for paper pushes uh, and mumblers of, of prayer. Um, maybe there's a vaguer term for um, uh, for for religious speech. I mean, um, what what are some other terms for religious speech? There's there's a prayer, there's a hymn, there's a sermon, there's a homily. Um, what's what what's a vaguer term? Mumblers of verse. I think I, I think that's that's all right. Um, although although the inconsistency here is a bit ugly. It would be nicer to say pushes of paper. And mumblers of verse. Although when you say pushes of paper, I, I, I don't think anyone knows what you're saying. So so we should say paper pushes uh, and verse mumblers. I don't know. I, that probably just sounds weird and awkward. Um, I kind of like it. Divine whisperers. Yeah, that's a good one, Oyster. Uh, and welcome uh, Tian, Tianan1310. Um, uh, liturgy. Yeah, that's a great word. Um, man of the cloth. Yeah. Th the, yeah, those are all nice. I think those are all appropriate terms. I think paper pushes and verse mumblers is fun. Ah, uh, it's <laughs> verse mumblers is sounds so awkward though. P psalms. How do you even pronounce psalms or is it just psalms or is it psalms? I don't even whatever. Uh every gas troll has a proctor on board. A standard pra as standard pra as standard practice required by the maritime organ. Frankly, Sashi has little patience for paper pushers and verse mumblers, uh, but if she's to spend the next... How long is her service? A month? The next month. Um, but if she's to spend the next month in the troll, the man should better say hello. Um... Um, Sashi Sashi finds um, Treshin's cabin in a far corner of the vessel um, furthest fur 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 furthest how do you fur, furthest? Is that a word? Fur, am I having a stroke or is furthest not a word? Oh, furthest. Oh, yeah, just misspelling it. All right. Um, Sashi finds Treshin's cabin in a far corner of the vessel, furthest from the um, endless drone of the engines. Um, She's struck. She's struck for a moment by the quiet. I, I I think there definitely needs to be a moment. Oh, farthest. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking. Uh, farthest. Are uh, farthest and furthest both words? Why why is furthest not redlined? Have I like added it to spell check? That's yeah. All right, whatever. 
It follows from the endless drone of the engines. She's struck by a moment by the quiet. And yeah, th- there definitely needs to be a moment in the story when the engines cut out for the first time ever. Um, and then there'll be silence. Like, down underwater, I'm assuming, th- there would be absolutely no noise. Um, and so in the same w- Oh, wouldn't it? Because, like, in the same way that when you... You know when, like, you drive way out of out of town and you're in the middle of nowhere... And because there's no light pollution, you can see the stars really bright and it's beautiful. There could be like an equivalent thing when you go really deep down in the ocean. Uh, there's no noise pollution, so there's like silence. And silence is a wacky thing. If you ever go into inside like a sound booth that has like perfect, complete sound absorption set up and you hear complete silence, it actually messes with your head. Silence is a crazy thing. And I think silence could be a really cool thing to play with in this story. Uh, in the moment when the engines cut off. Um, uh, Oyster suggests pushes of papers and prayers. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, d- does it... Because paper pushes is a term that people recognize. For pushes of papers and prayers. Verse, I think, is um, something that needs to come up later. But yeah, I think that's good, Oyster. Um, frankly, Sashi has little patience for pushes of papers and prayers. But if she's to spend the next month in the troll with the man, she'd better say hello. Um, Sashi finds Treshen's cabin in a far corner of the vessel, farthest from the engine... Dr- Uh, are we overdoing the plosives? We can try to ease those off. Um, Kelly points out that verse mumblers doesn't sound religious. Yeah, I, I true. I, I, I don't know if we want to go full religious with Treshen though. Like, I, I really do want to keep it in a vague middle ground um, between like academia and religion and archaeology, like some kind of weird combination of those things. Um, I'm not sure. Um, Sashi finds Treshen's cabin in a far corner of the vessel, far from the endless drone of the engines. Ceaseless is better than endless, I think. She's struck for a moment by the quiet. Yeah, I I don't think she should be struck yet. Um, and yeah, bioluminescence is is something else that could definitely happen. Because the other thing about the bottom of the ocean is darkness, I suppose. Um, and so moments of light amongst the darkness could be really powerful, I think. Um, so she finds Treshen's cabin in a far corner of the vessel. Um, in a remote corner of the vessel, far from the ceaseless drone of the engines. Um... Oh, Hadass is an actual archaeologi- archaeologist. That well, that would be that would be cool. Um, maybe we can drop some legit archaeology knowledge in here. That'd be sweet. Um, Sashi so find uh, far from the ceaseless drone of the engines. Um, outside the Proctor's closed door she could barely make out the scratching uh, the scratching of a pen we, we, we could make it a quill if we wanted to be really really intense about this uh, but I suppose it's hard to um, <laughs> reconcile the existence of a feathered quill on a giant submarine vessel. Although maybe that's just a cool juxtaposition, like weird old technology with new technology. Um, that could be cool. I'm not sure. Um, oh yeah, what was the issue with the oh, with the oxygen in the reptile thing? Not to get on any sort of tangent. What was the oxygen about? Um, I think we were talking about the oxygen levels on... Oh, we, well, we were talking about terraforming Mars, weren't we, in the reptile story? Um, and I think we we're trying to work out, well, like the oxygen. Oh no, we were talking about like whether high oxygen 
levels in the atmosphere would cause uh, like like burning or like combustion of the atmosphere, weren't we? Weren't we slightly concerned about the possibility of lighting the atmosphere of Mars on fire? Um, perhaps that was while we were discussing. I don't recall. Um, anyway, uh, she could barely make out the scratching of a pen. Um, Oyster says that pens don't work as well under the adjusted pressure. Yeah, that could be a cool justification. Maybe the reason why why the Proctor uses like some kind of quill sort of thing um, is because pens don't work in the pressure. Is that is that true though? Yeah, because because Mosa points out that astronauts have fancy pens. But is it a true fact that that underwater pressure can change the way pens work? Because I mean, wouldn't like we're about to learn how little I know about physics here, but 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 isn't like you'd be in like a pressurized environment inside the submarine vessel, right? So would you be subject to weird pressure effects? Um, I, I don't know if that's how that works. Uh, if if there's any physicists in the room, uh, enlighten us, please. Um, all right. But in any case, uh, she could barely make out the scratching of a pen. Um, Sashi, um, why, why wouldn't a quill work? I'd quite like to get to the bottom of this. Like, what would, would writing implements need to be different when you're 12,000 feet underwater? My, my totally unqualified intuition would be that if you're in, like, a pressurized vessel, it'd be, like, the same. Yeah, Zaster in the chat argues that the reason why space astronauts need space pens is because of gravity, not because of pressure. Like the like the pressure would be the same in a properly pressurized spacecraft as it is on Earth, right? Mosa says that pencils are bad in enclosed atmospheres. <laughs> why is that? Yeah, no, Reg is saying that, yeah, the pressure would be normal. Um... But Oyster is arguing that a pen underwater actually would gum up weirdly. <laughs> Dadas is arguing that expensive pens are dumb when you can just use pencils. <laughs> uh, look, I'm really enjoying this pen-pencil controversy. I'm glad we're tackling the important issues here on Martin Cordial. Um, I th yeah, look, let's 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 just take Hadassah's advice and just use uh a pencil i think i think i think pencils make sense the scratching of a pencil although of course like pencils i mean let's be real pencils aren't that noisy uh, come on but like whatever um sashi so uh uh eases his door open with caution um And is struck by the um, by the space Trashan had made for himself. Um, so we get some of this out of the way, like a nesting bird. It softened the harsh steel walls with all his papers, books, scholarly equipment. Uh, we've got some consternation over whether Sashi is rude for not knocking. I, I, I think what she's doing is that she's sort of like... I, 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 well, I mean, yeah, all right. I mean, she could knock and then open, but I think she's opening and she's like about to knock like while she's sort of easing the door open but then she gets distracted by the side of the room so like y you can like open the door and then sort of like knock while you're doing it just sort of say g'day uh but i think in this case she gets distracted by the space i think she's about to knock with the door open um but yeah maybe that does seem weird uh sashi eases his door open with caution uh 
reaching to uh, reaching to knock politely, but is struck by the space Treshen has made for himself. So we are using present tense, aren't we? Um, which is which is the cool tense, by the way. Um, Oyster's talking about voices and pencils. Um, not sure. Um, yeah, no, Oyster gets it. The old knock and enter. It's a thing. It's a move. You do, you, you it's the old one-two punch. You open while you knock. I think that's legit. Uh, Mosa says that the Fisher space pen writes underwater, which would make sense if you're in a scuba suit. Yeah, well, yeah, we will need fancy pens for when we're underwater doing a little spacewalk under the water. Or well, I wonder what kind of, like, uh, scuba suit you'd need to venture outside of the vessel into the water under 12,000 feet of water, under that sort of pressure. Would you need, like, some kind of, like, super bulky giga scuba, some kind of, like, really huge big thing? Would it even be possible to have, like, like a suit-sized thing? Um, I, I'm not sure. Sashi eases his door open with caution, reaching to knock politely, but is struck by the space Treshen has made for himself. Like a nesting bird... He has softened the harsh steel walls with all his papers, books, scholarly equipment. His lenses, brass stands, reading light, compasses, calipers, all perched precariously on humming pipes and junction boxes. Great intricate maps and diagrams are hung about, sealed in plastic to keep out the omnipresent damp. Before Sashi... And amidst it all... Scribbling intently at some yellowed papers is Proctor Sashi. Um, yeah, we don't need that anymore. Oh, Proctor Treshen, rather. Um, and yeah, we probably, yeah, we probably could have, like, special science fiction suits that deal with the pressure. Um, Boba Fett's Slave One. Ooh, yeah. Oyster suggests some kind of spaceshipy thing. Uh, a little mini spaceship, that'd be cool. Um, uh, all right. And amidst it all, scribbling intently... At some yellowed papers is Proctor Treshen. What are you doing? He hisses pulling papers to his chest protectively. Sashi takes a step back. Sorry, she says. I didn't mean to disturb you. So she is managing to do <laughs> exactly the thing that Rain uh, told her not to do. Um, you know what? Maybe Sashi is doing this deliberately as, like, sort of a defiant thing. Like, maybe Sashi is a little bit of a rabble-rouser, a little bit of a shit-stirrer, and she's actually deliberately sort of provoking the Proctor uh, out of a sort of bloody-mindedness. I mean, maybe that just makes her sort of less relatable and nice, but, like, uh, maybe she just doesn't really have the patience for trash and sensitivity and as a result is just sort of barging in um un unapologetically what what kind of person is sashi uh like i think she's obviously a bit like 
like she likes rain. She relates to rain. I think she's she's like an engineer sort of a person, and she's good at what she does, and she's pragmatic. Um, but perhaps, and 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 yeah, I I don't think she can have much uh, respect or interest in the more sort of uh, abstract stuff that Treshan represents. Uh, but but I mean, she 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 will definitely need to walk that line. I think she'll need to appeal to both sides. Uh, throughout this story somehow. Um, Alright, BRW, the pro is a bit confused as to where we are. So where we are is we are 12,000 feet underwater on a vessel called the Gas Troll. This is some kind of a big, strange, submarine, industrial vessel that crawls along the bottom of the sea floor, deep, deep down. And our protagonist is Louisa Sashi, and she's like a sort of an engineer worker person who's working with this guy Rain, who's like this nice, decent dude uh, who she's working with. Uh, but there's also some weirder people on the vessel, including Proctor Treshen, who's like this sort of uptight, monkey, academic-y sort of guy. Um, monkey, <laughs> monkey, not as in the primate. Um, and the vessel's going to discover something cool and weird. Um, Oyster suggests that Treshen has steampunk tendencies. I think that is absolutely true. Um, and yeah, anyone that volunteers to go down, uh, 12,000 feet underwater for a few months is a bit tapped, as Oyster says, which I think is dead true. Um, yeah, she's bold, I think that's true, Mosa. Um, and... Yeah, alright. Um, yeah, so maybe Sashi, I mean, look, it's a good heroic quality to be unafraid to your own detriment, right? Like, to be so sort of, like, fearless that you go sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. And maybe Sashi is that. Maybe Sashi deliberately defies Rain's advice by sort of semi-barging into Treshin's cabin. Um, and that's why she does what she does. So, Sashi finds Treshin's cabin in a remote corner of the vessel. Um, outside the Proctor's closed door, she could barely make out scratching of a pencil. Um, so how does she formulate this in her head? Outside the Proctor's closed door, she could barely make out the scratching of a pencil. Um, Sashi... The Proctor's door... The Proctor's door is ajar. Uh... The Proctor's door is ajar, um, with the warm glow of candlelight. With candlelight spilling warm from within. That's kind of nice. Candlelight spilling warm from within. Um, Sashi Sashi eases his door open um Sashi eases his door open uh we're having uh we've got some door puns in here uh quality Actually, yeah, Oyster suggests that Treshin's listening to music, and I think that's a great idea. I think Treshin should be listening to earbuds, uh, listening to, like, an iPod, like a modern music technology, while looking through Ancient Scrolls by Candlelight. I think that would actually be dope as hell, like, the, like a juxtaposition of, like, modern technology and, like, an old-school vibe. I think that would be really cool. Um, and the justification for the Candlelight, I'm thinking, like, how about the the usual lights that they'd use, like fluorescent lights or something, uh, are maybe harsh and they could damage uh, Treshin's papers, and so that's why uh, Treshin chooses to use uh, candlelight instead, which which maybe we can claim is less damaging to the uh, papers. Um, although, of course, you know, you probably wouldn't use ca combustible fire amongst delicate papers, but whatever. Um... Uh, what kind of music does Treshin like? I reckon he listens to, um, 
some intense uh, Russian chanting music. You ever hear that oct- octavist shit? It's, it's great stuff. Um, and yes, Adva- an iPod is modern, I swear. You millennials and your and your bloody new devices, all the... Th- We're not going to do that. Um... Yeah, I think yeah, uh, that's I think that's a good way of saying it. Hadas, I, I think Sashi is testing Proctor and poke. She's deliberately poking the bear to see if he's really as scary as Rain says. And yeah, it, yeah, the candles would <laughs> run the risk of burning the papers. All right, ma- maybe we should. All right, it, we won't have candles. We'll have just an incandescent light um, with warm incan decent light spilling from within. All right, that's that's fair. Sashi eases his door open. Reach. All right, all right, all right. We'll solve the great knocking controversy once and for all. We will have Sashi knock, but because the proctor is listening to music, he doesn't hear the knock, and then Sashi comes in, and then the proctor gets pissed off because she sort of surprises him. Um, that makes sense. Sashi finds Treshin's cabin in a remote corner of the vessel, far from the from the ceaseless drone of the engines. The proctor's door is ajar, with warm incandescent light spilling from within. Sashi knocks firmly, firmly on the steel. and gets no response. Knocks again. Nothing. Oh, warm glowing fungus in a glass container, Stephanie suggests. that. That's a good idea. Because uh, that gives it a sort of an underwatery, weird biological feel, which I think is appropriate. Yeah, bioluminescence, a fish. Yeah, Hadar suggests like a fish in a jar would be dope as fuck. I think that would be very appropriate for the underwatery theme. An eel lamb, fish, fungus, eels, mushrooms, uh, a nice shiny oyster, perhaps. Um, yeah, all of those could work. Um, and I think that would suit... I think that would could add a suitably creepy vibe because it could be like a weird coloured light. Maybe this could be a greenish tinge, which gives this sort of unnatural vibe. And also, like, maybe... Uh, the proctor is studying these these bioluminescent fungi. Um, yeah, that's cool. All right, so um, so instead of a warm incandescent light, which is nice, but it's but it's yeah, it's not quite the vibe we're going for with the proctor. The proctor's door is ajar with a um, with a. <sighs> With an eerie, uh, uh, I'm 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 thinking like a yellow green limey sort of colored light, but a limelight, as in like stagecraft, is not lime colored, is it? I'm sure there's some fascinating etymology there as to why, um, limelights are called limelights, because they're not actually lime colored, but I'm sure. There's some reason. I don't know. Um, or did I just... I don't know. All right, but whatever. Um, an aquamarine glow. What? All right, what, what kind of color should we use, guys? Um, green. <laughs> yeah, I used to suggest that, uh, that Treshin talks to these lights like friends, like... Uh, like uh what's his face on the on the the hunchback of Notre Dame with those statues, those gargoyles, that'd be cute. Um uh lime like stone green. Yeah, I I think green does make the most sort of sense. Um with an eerie with an eerie green glow. The Proctor's door is ajar with an eerie green glow leaking from begin from within. Eerie green 
eerie green glow leaking is so wonderfully gross compared to our warm uh our our, our warm candlelight spilling out from within isn't it um oh pistachio that's a bit too delicious i think turquoise um turquoise is a great color great great word for a color um Sashi finds Treshin's cabin in a remote corner of the vessel, far from the ceaseless drone of the engines. The proctor's door is ajar, with with an eerie green glow leaking from within. Sashi. Sashi. Curious. Eases the door open. Knocking on the metal door. And is struck at the space Treshin has made for himself. Of course it leaks, Oyster says. Why wouldn't it leak? Yes, I agree. Everything that should leak everything that can leak should leak. Um, and Hadass is spookered. Excellent. We are definitely going for some spookerage early in this story. Um, cool. Sashi finds Treshin's cabin in a remote corner of the vessel. Eerie green glow leaking from within. Sashi, curious, eases the door open. Uh. On the metal door. As she eases the door open. And is struck by the space Treshin has made for himself. Struck at instead of struck by, I think. It's struck at the space Treshin has made for himself. Instead of using the, um... Oh no, flu... How, how do you spell fluorescent? Uh, flu... flu... Yeah, they... Alright, that wasn't so hard. Um... Instead of using the standard fluorescent uh, fittings on the ceiling, uh, Treshin has lined uh, lined his walls with shelves of... Instead of using the standard fluorescent fittings on the ceiling, Treshin has lined his walls with shelves of thick glass jars. Um, each contains some, uh, alien, uh, some, not, 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 not aliens as in space aliens, but aliens as in sea aliens, you know, each contains some, uh, a different luminescent sea thing. Um, uh, floating fronds of, um, floating fronds of, uh, something, something, uh, um, 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 f- fleshy, uh, fleshy round masses that, uh, pulse and beat. Um, um, shimmering strands, um, shimmer- shimmering strands and filaments that um, drift in slow circles um, and an agitated looking crab <laughs> are we trying to be funny in this story I don't I don't think we are but uh, that's a bit too fun to say um, floating fronds. Um, 
floating fronds. Pale, fleshy masses. That slowly pulse. Um, Rego suggests some tentacles, and I think that's inevitable. Um, floating... Treshen has lined his walls with shelves of thick glass jars. Each contains a different... Each contains a different luminescent sea thing. Floating fronds of seagrass. Pale... Pale, fleshy masses with a s uh, slow pulse, shimmering strands and filaments that drift in slow circles, and an agitated looking crab. A whole, um, a whole. Dozens of them. A dozen. And a dozen. Uh, neatly stacked jars. Emit the only light in the room. It's a, it's a little bit too haunted house, isn't it? It's a bit. It's a bit too ridiculous, but whatever. Oh, yeah, snails. Yeah, snails could work. Um, or slugs or, or, or sea cucumbers. Um, I'd say sea cucumbers, but sea cucumbers just sounds a bit too um, delicious, you know? Sea cucumbers, that's just a, a silly. Um, and an agitated looking crap. Dozens of them in a dozen neatly stacked jars. I mean, the only lighting in the room. Um... Treshen's desk. Um, <laughs> we do have the suggestion of some kind of like face mask for uh, Treshen. Maybe he could have like his hair, his hair up in rollers as well. It would be nice. Maybe he's, oh, <laughs> yeah, we all, uh, lots of possibilities. Um, the uh, the the eerie. Glow throws um, alien shadows across the study. Um, barely lighting the uh, equipment in the room. Uh, how do we use this sort of nesting bird thing? Do we even want to keep that? Uh, like a nesting bird, Treshen has softened the harsh steel walls, walls with all his papers, books, scholarly equipment, his lenses, brass stands. Um, he's, uh, fuck. Uh, the eerie glow throws alien shadows across the study. Um... Barely lighting the equipment in the room. Um, uh, most of the trolls. Jushin has lined the trolls bare metal walls. with papers, maps, 
book stacks, scholarly equipment, lenses, brass stands, compasses, calipers, perch precariously, strange silhouettes. Strange silhouettes in the, um, I've already used alien shadows. Strange silhouettes in the, um, in the, in the, strange silhouettes against the green glow. Amidst it all. Scribbling intently at some yellowed papers is the proctor himself. Is the proctor himself. Um, Sashi knocks again at the at the open door, but Treshin doesn't hear her. Uh, he's got some. He's got some old school earbuds in. He's got some old school earbuds in. Um, His head bobbing perceptibly. To some music. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a cool idea, Mosa. Maybe, um... <laughs> oh, well, maybe that could even be part of, like, the main threat that occurs in the story. Maybe... Maybe... I mean, I mean traditionally, in some kind of, like, sci-fi horror situation, like they would encounter some kind of alien life form outside of the trawl, bring it inside. Um, and then Stephanie suggests that, like, some kind of fungus uh, spreads around the trawl um, and causes, you know, mechanical problems or maybe even a hazard to human life. Um, and, or, I mean, you know, it, it could certainly just be a, a lower-level threat. Maybe it's just a minor irritant that annoys Rain, the engineer, but it could, it could almost be like a larger threat. Maybe the fungus grows into something um, really scary. Um, Oyster reckons Treshin is listening to some Nine Inch Nails. Um, it would be funny if like this sort of uptight academic guy was listening to something really juicy. Um, but I'm not sure we'll find out yet. Maybe he's listening to something, not even music, like something really weird. Um... And yeah, Sashi indeed could be responsible for damaging something um, in the study. I'm sure. I'm sure Treshin would be very mad uh, if any of his glass jars were broken. Although at the same time, it seems pretty silly to uh, not have these things like secured better. Like, I mean, on this kind of a vessel going along the seafloor, like presumably it's going to be to some extent like a rocky ride. This isn't going to be a totally like flat uh, surface level surface at all times, right? I mean glass jars on shelves uh, don't seem very safe. Maybe they're attached or something, I don't know. Um, Sashi knocks again at the open door, but Treshin doesn't hear her. He's got some old school earbuds in his head bobbing perceptibly to some music. Sashi stands puzzled for a moment. Um... It wasn't quite what she was expecting. Uh, Hadas suggests listening to Whale Song, which would be uh, really cool. Um, y d do you guys know about the bloop? There's this thing called the bloop, which uh, was a recorded noise that happened underwater once um, some years ago. It was detected like by multiple underwater stations, like 
like long, long, many, many great distances apart. Um, and it was just this incredibly loud noise that happened underwater and no one knows what caused it. I, I think the leading theory is that it was some kind of like bubble of gas that was emitted by some crack underground or something. Uh, that caused this massive noise, but it was quite mysterious. And of course, you got some of the nuttier people suggesting, you know, uh, underwater aliens and and sea monsters causing it. Who knows? Um, yeah. Uh, Sashi stands puzzled for a moment. This wasn't quite what she was expecting. Um, she almost. She remembers Rain's warning and almost decides and almost decides to leave Treshen to it. But how bad can But how bad can he be? Sashi has dealt with worse. This old monk. Um, and she was never one to tiptoe. Sashi taps. Sashi taps Treshen on the shoulder, and he, uh, and he jumps suddenly, like a cat that's seen a cucumber. <laughs> Have you guys seen that? When, when, when the, there are these great videos online of people putting cucumbers, uh, next to cats, and the cats freak out when you do that like it's this whole thing like apparently the cats uh mistake um apparently the cats mistake cucumbers for snakes it's like there's just this universal thing among felines and the moment they see a cucumber they just leap into the air like they just phase into the fucking shadow realm um it's pretty amazing um so maybe uh i, I that, that's how i'm imagining the proctor jumps up when he, when he gets startled um, and he, he jumps startled, um, and, um, he jumps startled. And, uh, and, uh, what's the right term? Not like favorite. Uh, I, I, I think he like covers up some of his papers. Um, so we're trying to add some mystery here. I, I think that, uh, when Sashi surprises the proctor, he like tries to like rifle his papers away so that Sashi can't see them, uh, suggesting that he's doing something sort of secret and weird. Um, What's the right word to describe him, like, urgently, um, and, and urgently, um, rifles his papers into a folder? Well, no, that, that's not really, yeah, I think it's fine that he instead, um, yeah, p pulls them to his chest protectively, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that is a better, um, better way of saying it and turns on her cold ferocity maybe that's a bit too much but whatever he jumps startled and turns on her with cold ferocity what are you doing who are you he hisses pulling papers to his chest protectively he um all right, what's something in between pulls his earbuds out and rips? I think somewhere it yanks. 
He yanks the earbuds from his ears. Uh, and, um... And Sashi hears... The tinny noise they emit. And Sashi hears the tinny noise they emit. Swinging about his... Um... About his skinny neck. I think there's an older guy, I suppose. Uh, 60s, maybe. Um, Sashi takes a step back. Sorry. She says. I didn't mean to disturb you. I'm Louisa Sashi. And yeah, Advar's asking, like, why hasn't Sashi met Treshin before? Uh, I think this is literally, like, her first, like, day or first couple days at the job. Um, this is her first couple days on the gastrol. Um, although we could do something more interesting. Like, we could say that maybe, um, maybe Treshin has been sick, even. Like, maybe Treshin, um, maybe Treshin was in the sick bay with some sort of mysterious hush-hush condition, uh, which sort of adds to his mystery, and that's why Sashi hasn't met him yet, like, she's been here for, like, a couple weeks, but Treshin is only now out of the sick bay. that might be kind of interesting, um, and yeah, Reg Re is confused, the, the, the reason why Sashi is going to meet Treshin now is that she hasn't met him yet, and what she's sort of doing today is going around and meeting, uh, each of her, each of the crew members, I think, like, she's already met Rain, she's already met um, most of the other crew, she hasn't yet met, uh, Treshin, and she's gonna do that. So, this is, like, her first day or two on the vessel. That's what I think is happening here. Um, I didn't mean to disturb you. I'm Louisa Sashi. Uh, subtech are listed, transferred from subdoc. Why are we saying sub twice? Um, just transferred from subdoc today. Um, here to assist engine hand rain for the quarter. And you have no business and then you have no business here. His eyes gleam cold behind his spectacles. Sashi pauses for a moment. Advar says that this meeting needs to have a plot element. I think, yeah, I, I think it'll be better to, um, I think it'd be better to use this opportunity. We, I, mean, I mean, we do need to plant the seeds of mystery and danger here, I think. Um, so I think one of the ways we can do that is by saying Sashi pauses. What are those papers you've got there? Eyeing the parchment at his chest. You don't want me to... Those? What? Treshin says indignantly. I am the proctor on this vessel. You have no... Not your place. It's not your place to question I 
I'm not from... Um... I told you. Alright, I, th I think we're making a change here. I think Sashi is not just um, an engineer or, or someone who's helping engineer Rain. I think she's like a uh, auditor or like a safety inspector or like... I mean, safety inspector sounds lame, but a cooler term for a safety inspector. Uh, someone who... Um, someone who's responsible for getting stuff done and she's suspicious of Treshin and his papers and so is 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 confronting him here about what he might know and 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 she she, she feels she has the right to know what he's up to um what are you doing who are you he hisses pulling papers to his chest protectively Sashi takes a step back Apologies. Protocol officer. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good one, Oyster. I told you. I'm not with your organ. I think the organ is perhaps the name of his uh, institution uh, that, that, that the proctor comes from. I'm not with your organ. I'm not subject. To that authority. I'm from Subtech, and it's my... That's my place to assess, um... Well, I mean, is it is it cool to have a protagonist who's like a bureaucrat? Uh, I, I mean, we were saying that Sashi, you know, has no... Uh, interest in in paper pushes and, and and yet if she's like a regulatory protocol officer I think she has to have a certain amount of patience for papers doesn't she is it cool to have a protagonist who's a I mean I mean maybe she's lying maybe Sashi is even some kind of uh double agent of some kind um god I don't know um you have no business here Sashi pauses what are those papers you've got there she asks eyeing the pie in his chest. You don't want me to, you don't want me to see those? What? Treshin says indignantly. I kind of want him to spit indignantly, but it might be misread as literally spitting. I'm just saying like uh he 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 he, he spits the word what. He just goes what? Like he's really offended that he's really unused to people questioning his authority, I think. Um Yeah, Kelly doesn't enjoy <laughs> Kelly doesn't enjoy uh Sashi being a protocol officer. Well all right, well, I, I I think we at least want to make her like an outsider to some extent. Like protagonists should be outsiders. I mean Sashi is new to the uh gastrol already. I, I I think there's an important distinction in her being separate from everyone else and, and she's not part of whatever um, hokey fucking religious academic institution that, uh, that the proctor is. Um, yeah, Advar suggests that you don't want me to see those papers should be subtext. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Um, so she should just say, uh, what exactly are you working on here? She asks, eyeing the papers at his chest. I, I mean, I, I kind of enjoy the directness of her literally just saying, hey, what are those fucking papers? Don't try and hide them from me, you dickhead. Like, I like the directness of her just going, you trying to hide shit from me? But you're right, like, it should be something that's uh, left for the reader to put one on one together. So she pauses. What exactly are you working on here? She asks, eyeing the papers at his chest. What? Treshin spits indignantly. I am the proctor on this vessel. It is not your place to question. I told you. I'm not f with your organ. Um. I'm not with your organ. I'm not subject to that authority. I'm from Subtech. Um. 
Uh, and as all right, we we all right, we we still need a, a sweet job description for her. Protocol officer is good. Uh, some other kind of officer. Uh, as um. Me me mechanical officer, even like like, cause yeah, I I I think it makes sense for her to be something material and utilitarian and physical. I told you, I'm not with your organ. I'm not subject to that authority. I'm from subtech, and as mechanical officer. It is my place. To know how, um, troll fac facilities are being used. What are these glass? <laughs> What's in these glass jars? Why don't you turn on the lights? Uh, and this is this is this is so like counter to what you would conventionally do in a story, I would think, right? Like 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 normally. Normally, when the protagonist finds something spooky and weird, the protagonist is spooked and weirded out and, like, just sort of sort of moves on. But Sashi is just going straight for the balls right away, uh, which I kind of love. Like, Sashi is, Sashi is too impatient to wait for the nonsense of a usual uh, dribbled out bit by bit story. Like, like um, I quite enjoy her just calling Proctor's bullshit immediately. Uh, Kelly says, it would be cool if she was on the bottom tier a nobody, but she lies and says she's a specialist just to dick around, and then Proctor believes her and gets all flustered. That would be cool. Um, I feel like lying in this context, like, a lie is immediately gonna get caught out, you know? Um, like, like, when you're living in a confined space with a limited number of people, if you start lying to people, people are very quickly going to discover that you're lying. Um, which I don't know if is a great long-term strategy, but maybe Sashi is such a loose cannon that she just does not give a shit. Um, on day one. <laughs> Imagine coming to a new workplace, going up to someone important, and just saying, Yo, what the fuck are you doing? Huh? Tell me what your fucking business is. You trying to do a thing? I don't know. Uh, that would be cool. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, maybe it's just me, but I find it easier to relate to a protagonist that, like, has at least some prudence about her, you know? Um, so, I don't know, I, something in between. Like, like I, I do like her chutzpah in, like, fucking just getting up in there and saying, what are you up to? A, a, a lie maybe might be too far, I feel. Um, for now. I'm, I'm sure that Sashi will do uh, some pretty baller stuff later on, but I, I think a lie is maybe too far for now. All right, but, but all right, so, so what do we... God, we haven't gotten very far, have we? <laughs> I, was, I was hoping to really uh, write a whole second chapter, but, um... Uh, it, it, it's so much harder to continue a story than to than to um, than to write a new story. Uh, all right, so what's happening? So so she's walked in, she's met this weirdo Treshan guy. Um, well, yeah, I, I I think you're right, Kelly. That now is the moment when we define who Sashi is. Rega is 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 determined that Sashi is ginger. Um, all right, new canon. I reckon Sashi is shaved bald. Um, and we'll discover whether or not she's ginger as a, as her hair grows later on. That'll be cool. Um, uh, Oyster reckons she doesn't have a long-term strategy. They need her more than she needs them for some reason. Uh, perhaps Sashi has some kind of MacGuffin, some kind of essential skill that the vessel needs. Um, yeah, I think... I think that Sashi is definitely... Uh, so, so she definitely has respect for her competence and authority uh, to a fair extent. Um, but I think it's still a surprising big thing that she's coming up against the Proctor like this. All right, all right. So, so what's so what's happening? So, so she finds Treshan, Tre, uh, Treshan's cabin. The Proctor's door is ajar, eerie green glow. She eases the door open. She's struck at the space. Uh, the the shelves of thick glass jars, luminescent sea things, uh, eerie glow, alien shadows across the study, the equipment. Um, amidst it all, scribbling intently is the Proctor himself. 
Um, so she knocks again at the open door, but Treshan doesn't hear her. He's got some old school earbuds in, his head bobbing perceptibly to some music. Sashi stands puzzled for a moment. This wasn't quite what she was expecting. Um, this wasn't quite what she was expecting. Um, uh, most other proctors she's encountered have been fairly minimalist. The, um, the maritime organ uh, emphasizes um, uh, 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 what's the term? As at I don't even know how you pronounce that. At asceticism? Is that asceticism? Is that how you say that? Um, Um, the maritime organ emphasizes, uh, material simplicity. Um, many priests flirt with asceticism. And I, I think there is a fun irony in priests flirting with anything, because, uh, of course, many priests uh, being celibate. Uh, so I enjoy that. The maritime organ emphasizes material simplicity. Uh, and, uh... Oh, we could even make reference to some sort of a doctrine of the maritime organ. Like, we could quote... Um, oh, are we mispronouncing this? B BRW suggests that it's asceticism. Um... As, is it asceticism or or asceticism? Um, I always felt like it was... I, I thought it was like a deliberately weird pronounced C, even though the C, sh you feel like it shouldn't be pronounced. I'm not sure. The, um, most other proctors she's encountered have been fairly minimalist. Um, all right, can we think of a good line from, from the Maritime Bible? Uh, most other proctors she's encountered have been fairly minimalist. Um... Uh, surround not uh, the body in um, in the uh, uh, tra trappings of um, um, earth and stone uh, for the um, for the spirit is, um, uh, for the spirit is, uh, the, um, for the spirit is moored to the above, uh, by... Thought and word. Uh, not coin and stone. Uh, the spirit is moored. The spirit is moored to above by thought and verse, not coin and stone. Says the um, says the first tome of the maritime organ. Says the scripture of the maritime organ. Many of their proctors flirt with. Um, Oh, thank you, Pepperan, for the pronunciation guide. Although I confess, I never got around to learning 
uh, those, uh, what do you call them? Like the phonetic pronunciation characters that, that describe how to pronounce things. Um, it makes a lot of sense to have like a system like that to communicate pronunciation, but I, I never learned it. Um, so I'm afraid I still don't know how to pronounce asceticism, asceticism. Uh, but, but excitingly, we have, um, we have written some scripture of our, of our fictional religion. Um, so, so, so I think the maritime organ is li- is like a church almost. I think it's more than a church. I think it's, um, it, it also has like some kind of weird monastic academic flavor. Um, but the, but the scripture of the maritime organ says that the spirit is moored to above by thought and verse, not coin and stone. Um, so that's interpreted uh, as meaning that that the proctors and the priests and the followers of this religion shouldn't be overly interested in material goods. Um, that's a great point, Rega. Maybe um, maybe this maritime organ religion should be interested in the below, in the waters, um, instead of in the above. That's a great point. Um, so, I mean, you could. You, I mean, I guess you could do like a sort of a Zoroastrian flavor and sort of have. The above versus the below, light versus dark, good versus evil. Um, so maybe what's happening is that we're sort of straying into um, it a lot, like in the sort of religious sense. This 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 expedition represents journeying into the darkness. Oh, and this is why they have a priest on board. All right, so okay, here's some law. Here's some canon. The reason why each of these trawl vessels has a proctor on board is that by going thousands of feet down below underwater, you are going far away from the above. And the above, I think, is God, or is the heavens, and is the holy in the religion of the maritime organ. Um, or, well, all right, the maritime organ probably isn't the name of the church, but I think the maritime organ is the name of a church institution that regulates <laughs> that regulates the ecclesiastical aspects of uh, maritime activity. <laughs> this is getting silly. Well, maybe this is just world building. I'm not sure. Um, but but I think this sort of makes sense. Uh, I think this makes sense. So this religion emphasizes the sky and the above and upwardsness, uh, and therefore. Uh, the deep dark underwater is scary and 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 evil, and so that's why they have a proctor on board to sort of try and keep people connected to God even in the deep dark waters. I think that's cool. All right, so Sashi stands puzzled for a moment. This wasn't quite what she was expecting. Most other proctors she's encountered have been fairly minimalist. The spirit is moored to above by thought and verse, not coin and stone, says the scripture of the maritime organ. Many of their proctors flirt with asceticism. Asce- I, I don't know how to... Um, oh, and, 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 and yes, Oyster, that's what I'm sort of trying to get at, is the idea that I think the proctor, yeah, it brings some of the holy above down into the scary dark below. I think that's why they bring the proctor. The proctor is a light in the darkness. What's, oh, what's the name of Galadriel's file? In the Lord in the Lord of the Rings, is it just Galadriel's file? Uh, does it have a special name? Uh, that 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 sort of light, like you know when Samwise faces Shelob, um, and and he and he shines the light in the darkness. I I, I think that would be almost some of the religious imagery that um, that that the maritime organ is getting at. Um, and and since and since they're interested in light. It's weird that Procatrician is using uh, this weird bioluminescence instead of bright fluorescent light. Um, so yes, Mosa, I think that Tresian is like a somewhat rebellious monk because he's got this, yeah, he's got this obsession with studying the deep below indeed, um, which runs counter to the religious ideology of the maritime organ. Um, uh so yeah, he's almost like a rogue, a rogue priest um, who's sort of flirting with the dark side, perhaps. Um, Elendil, Kelly says Elendil is Elendil the name of the file of Galadriel? L- let me look that up. El Elendil. Um, he was the father of Asilda and Anarion. Um, so not connected to the. F- 
file as far as I can tell. Um, but certainly some uh, Gondorian bloke of some kind. Um, <laughs> always to suggest that this proctor should find a different reason every week to cancel his Sunday sermon. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the proctor hasn't been upholding his religious duties. Maybe he hasn't been carrying out his responsibilities. I mean, we could almost say that the reason why Sashi is coming to Tracian's office is is because she's been tasked with finding out why the fuck the proctor hasn't been doing his job. Everyone's a bit disturbed and upset that the proctor hasn't been doing his job, and that's why Sashi is here. But I don't think we want to change this this situation a- again. Um, I think that's something we could do later. Um, we could later on have have the proctor like lock himself in his study, and they have to try and work out what he's doing in there. It's disturbing. There's weird glows. There's shouts and screams. Um, and then they try to investigate. So she stands puzzled for a moment. This wasn't quite what she was expecting. Most of the proctors she's encountered have been fairly minimalist. The spirit is moored to above by thought and verse, not coin and stone, says the scripture of the maritime organ. Many of the proctors flirt with asceticism. Um, the only material things they keep in their rooms tend to be, um, tend to be scripture, um, Uh, tend to be scripture and and no um yeah the the use of the word minimalist um is a bit odd as yeah Spartan might be more appropriate at var although I think there is something funny about using the word minimalist because minimalist, uh, at least in my mind, is more of like a modern term for like an aesthetic, for like a like a fashionable sort of a thing. Um, and so describing like this religious person and like this industrial context with the word minimalist, I, I think is kind of funny just because it, it, it feels like an odd use of the word um, or maybe it's just a bad use of the word. I don't know. Um, most, many of the proctors flirt with asceticism. I'm going to go mad if I don't find out what the right pronunciation of that word is. Uh, many of the proctors flirt with asceticism. Asceticism. Um, um, the only material... Many of their proctors should we capitalize no that shouldn't be cap- capitalized m- m- most other proctors she's encountered have been fairly minimalist the spirit is moored to the above by thought and verse not by coin and stone says the scripture of the maritime organ many of their proctors flirt with asceticism the only material things material things they one of the few Material luxuries. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Pepper, but I, st- I still don't know how to read the phonetic IPA thing. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a hard C or, or a silent C. Um, but, but please enlighten me, if you can. Um, well, one of the few material luxuries they use... Um, Extra lighting. Yet here, Treshen uh, to to better connect with the light of above. Uh, th- there's a better word than connect. Commune, maybe. Um, silence. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, asceticism awesome yeah all right cool thanks pepper um they flirt with asceticism one of the few material luxuries they use uh extra lighting to better commune with the light of above yet here treshen is lurking lurking in this alien glow 
Yeah, asceticism. I think that's I think that's right. Asceticism. Um, os- oh yeah, austere. That's actually probably the right word, Mercer. Um, I, 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 I like the use of the word minimalist because uh, I think it's funny, and that's and that's why I have the ellipsis is I think to emphasize the weirdness of minimalism. So we could either say, um, we could either say most of the proxies she's encountered have been fairly austere, or we could say have been fairly. Minimalist. Except, alright, well, minimalist could refer to a bunch of different things, whereas austere, I think, refers more to possessions, doesn't it? What's what's the definition of austere? Severe or strict in manner or attitude. Okay, so even that doesn't... Alright, well, yeah, alright, yeah, it can refer to comforts or luxuries. Alright, well, let, let's not overthink it. We're, we're going too slowly, I think. Um... One of the few material luxuries they use are extra lighting to better commune with the light of of above. Yet here, Treshin is lurking in this alien glow. Um, um, uh, Oyster reckons minimalist. Yeah, we'll go minimalist. Uh, lurking in this alien glow. Uh, all right, how do we say that Sashi wants to know what the fuck is up? I think, like, uh, all right, so maybe Sashi has some kind of authority or some kind of duty to know what's going on here, but I I, th- I think the actual character motivation is that Sashi just wants... Sashi is just curious. She wants to know what this weird old dude is up to. Um, Sashi wants to know why. <laughs> that's That's a bit direct, but whatever. Sashi wants to know why. Um... She remembers Rain's warning. But how bad can Treshin be? If she's got to spend a month on board the Troll with this man. Sashi won't spend it tiptoeing tiptoeing about about his um, his little secrets. I think that's good. Sashi wants to know why. She remembers Rain's warning. How bad can... Tresh and B. If she's got to spend a month on board the trawl with this man, Sashi won't spend it tiptoeing about. Tiptoeing around his little secrets. She taps the man. She taps Tresh on the shoulder. He jumps, startled, and turns on her. With, um... Cold ferocity is wrong. Um, it, how, how do we describe that sort of... Um, how do we describe the sort of energy, like the sort of adrenaline energy that that Treshin would get from being startled and shocked like this? There's, there's probably a good word to describe that sort of burst of, of irritated energy that's suddenly generated, which which... Uh, so she can hear in in his voice. She taps Treshin on the shoulder. He jumps, startled, and turns on her with ferocity. What are you doing? Who are you? He hisses, pulling papers to his chest protectively. He yanks the earbuds from his ears, and Sashi hears the tinny noise they emit, swinging about his skinny neck. Um, yeah, suspicion, anxiety, absolutely. Um... Nervous energy, yeah. Those those are all going on here. Um, Sashi takes a step back. Apologies, she says curtly. I didn't mean to disturb you. 
I'm Louisa Sashi, just transferred from Subdoc today. Here to assist engine engine hand rain for this quarter. Um then you have no business here. His eyes gleam cold behind his spectacles. Sashi pauses. What exactly are you working on here? she asks, eyeing the papers at his chest. What? Treshan spits indignantly. I'm the proctor on this vessel. It's not your place to question. I told you. I told you, Proctor, I'm not with your organ. I'm from Subtech. And as a mechanical officer, it is my place to know how troll facilities are being used. Are being used. She points to a She points to a junction. She points to a humming junction box in the corner of Treshan's room. If I can't access, um, if I can't access the ventilation system here, how can I keep? The troll running and the crew safe. She eyes the proctored. The proctored glares and Sashi meets his eyes defiantly. So this, I think, is a semi-lie. So this is this is sort of a compromise with what Kelly was suggesting. So Sashi is pointing at like this junction box and saying, "Well, you know, I have a right to know what's happening here because as the engineer, like what we're just well, she's not going to be a protocol officer. She's just going to be an engine hand with rain. That's all she's doing. But Sashi is sort of upping uh, what she knows, um, or she's upping her sort of she's exaggerating." her responsibilities here and she's saying well you know there's a junction box in this room and if I can't have access to it and if I don't know what's going on here then well you know you might not be safe she's saying at the end here it's almost a threat um uh um uh Sashi meets Glare pointedly uh, I don't know if we're getting this across properly, but but Sashi is sort of threatening the Proctor here by saying, if I can't access this junction box uh, and I can't do the ventilation, then you might not be safe. Sashi's threatening the Proctor's well-being um, purely as a way, be- uh, purely to satisfy her curiosity. Because in reality, I don't think that junction box is actually important. I think we're about to have a revelation later that that junction box is actually just something that's kind of irrelevant and doesn't need maintenance or anything. Um... So yeah, it'll be a defunct junction box, we'll learn later. Uh, but but Sashi is exaggerating and, and, and using that as a way to try and get information out of out of the Proctor just out of curiosity. She points to a junction box in the corner of Treshan's room. If I can't access the ventilation system here, how can I keep the troll running and the crew safe? Sashi... Sashi, Sashi pointedly meets the Proctor's glare. He fumes for a moment. Fine, he says. Fine, he says. Um, oop. Undo. Um, Um, yeah, it could be the box of the lights he doesn't use. Uh, fine, he says. He he fumes for a moment. Fine, he says. 
What do you need to know? I'm Proctor on this vessel. So he's sort of swinging his dick around here as well at the moment. He's trying to assert his authority at the same time that she's asserting hers. Um, these, these guys are going to be at, at loggerheads for the rest of the story, I think. Um, he fumes for a moment. Fine, he says. What do you need to know? I'm Proctor on this vessel. I perform my ecclesiastical duties. Um, perform my ecclesiastical duties. Um, I ensure the troll and his crew are, um, Ugh. What, what what sort of jargon would he use to sort of describe his priestly role? Uh, I, I perform my ecclesiastical duties uh, to keep um, this vessel in communion with the above. And the jars... The jars? Sashi asks. Samples. Treshan says defensively. Um, fiddling with the earbuds. Um, um, captain, oh, who's the captain of this vessel? Is there a captain of this vessel? We need to work out who the other crew are. Um, I suppose there's meant to be some kind of, well, we could almost, we could all, we could also make, uh, Rain the captain. I think that would almost kind of work. I mean, he's like, he's the engineer guy. But maybe the engineer guy is the captain guy. Like, he, I mean, he's a sort of go down with his ship kind of guy, I think. Um, maybe at, maybe this is the sort of situation where engineering expertise sort of trumps most other things. And so Rain is sort of the final authority, even though he doesn't really, like, act like a total authority, you know? So there's maybe, like, a power vacuum happening in this space. Because um, Rain is, like, sort of officially in charge, but he doesn't... He's not the sort of person who actually... Um, takes charge. So Sashi and Treshin perhaps compete to some extent to sort of play the role of being in charge, seeing as Rain doesn't sort of assert his authority as much. Maybe that's what's going on here. Um, fiddling with the earbuds. Uh, Rain gave me permission... To study the um, submarine life, um, much of it is uh, been seen before. And can only uh, much of it has never been seen before, and can only survive um, cannot survive on the surface. Our only opportunity to understand these creatures is here amidst the. Um, habitat. And is the study of extremophile marine life part of your usual ecclesiastical duties? Sashi prods. Um, Oyster thinks that the crew should be bathed in the light of above. Um, yeah, that's a good terminology. Um, 
perform my ecclesiastical duties to keep this vessel um may we be bathed in the light of the above um i know i know the saying above twice is awkward um uh sashi recognizes the phrase there's a as a standard response uh as a standard response but uh i can't think of it right now but like and you is sort of the gist of it um uh but she opts not to give treshen uh the satisfaction And the jars, she says. She asks. Okay, so I, I, I think this is actually kind of cool. So like, so like, Treshen says, "Oh, this is my job as a priest. You know, may we be bathed in the light of the above." And that's like a sort of a "May the force be with you" or something, which is then expected to have like a religious response. And also with you, you know, is like the, is it would be like the expected polite thing to say. Is 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 the response to this religious phrase, um, yeah, and also with you, um, they changed it. Did they change the Catholic phrase? But yeah, whatever. You, you know what I mean. So, so so the the phrase is may we be light in the bathed in the light of the above. Sashi does not give the response phrase, and so that's just another way of her being sort of a bit aggressive and a bit dismissive uh, of Treshen's uh, authority. Um, um, as a standard response, um, may we be bathed in the light of the above. Um, um, and, and the above be, be, yeah, I don't know. I can't think of the phrase right now. Um, I, actually, come to think of it, you know what needs to be like a, like a central phrase in this story is um, as above, so below. I feel like that could almost be um, that could almost be like some kind of a subtitle or some kind of another um, core phrase to this story. I think I think maybe sort of duality and opposites between. Uh, the above and the sky and the below and the deep sea. I think maybe that duality and that oppositeness might be something that we use moving forward. But I think we need to conclude Treshin and and Sashi's interaction. So, so, uh, so Treshin says samples. Uh, Rain gave me permission to study the submarine life we discover. Um, much of it has never been seen before and cannot survive on the surface. Our only opportunity to understand these creatures is here amidst their native habitat. And is the study of extremophile marine life part of your usual ecclesiastical duties, Sashi Prods? Um, 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 Wait, is that actually a true fact, though? Did, did 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 the Pope really like put out a memo and say that they've changed the Catholic words from uh, I, I, whatever it is? May the force be with you, and the response, and also with you. Has that really been changed to, and with your spirit? Is that is that a real fact? That's crazy. That's so silly. You can't change fucking old tradition like that and still keep bloody le legitimacy. All right, whatever. Uh, 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 and is the study of extremophile marine life part of your usual ecclesiastical duties? Um, 
Trishan, um... Um... Trishan is stone-faced. Rain gave me permission. Applies. And what about these papers? Sashi presses. Um... Uh, maps, Treshan says. Records. Um, records. Um, organ library. <laughs> Man, organ library is a hell of a term. But I feel like this is the library of the maritime organ uh, organization. Um, records, maps, Treshan says. Records, the organ library. Um, um, has uh, has surviving reports uh, from past. Expeditions in this area. Uh, my goal is to I'm studying these to find details that may prove useful in the month ahead. And have you found anything useful? Sashi asks. Not, not as yet. Trishan breaks her gaze. Not as yet. Fine, Sashi says, repeating the word that Trishan said before. Um, fine, Sashi says. I'll leave you to your studies. I'll leave you to your studies. Um. <laughs> she leaves the man standing in the uh, in the green shadows. Amidst his, amidst his glass jars, Sashi doesn't expect uh, doesn't Sashi doesn't expect further issues <laughs> with Treshin. Sashi doesn't expect further issues with Treshan. She won't actually have to access the junction box in his room. Um, it's from an old defunct system. It's 
from an old defunct system. She won't actually have to access the junction box in his room. It's from an old defunct system of no concern to her. All right. So, um, oh, I, I will note quickly that, um, I will note quickly that the purpose of bioluminescent light instead of fluoros Jesus Christ uh, flu flu fluoros uh, I can't spell um yeah that's right instead of fluoros uh avoiding damaging papers. I think that's the goal. I think that's the, the real reason why he doesn't use the bright light in there is that he doesn't want to damage his old papers. Well, actually, no. Well, no. The real reason would be that the sea creatures in the jars would probably be hurt or freaked out or damaged by the bright light. They're sea creatures who live in the deep dark. Of course, those creatures need to exist in the deep dark. That's why, um, that's why Treshin keeps his room dark. Although, I mean, if that was the case, you'd think you would just, um, you would just, like, make the jars opaque, but yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, that's a good point, Oyster, that's better. There's no concern to anyone. Alright, so Sashi leaves the room, and as far as she can, she's concerned, she's won this interaction. Um, she, I mean, she, she mostly went into this just sort of like, she doesn't like people telling her that, that they're better than her. She doesn't like people um, trying to keep secrets from her. She's curious. Uh, and so she she wanted to sort of make a point and assert her authority over Treshin. Um, well, not her real authority, but but her her power over Treshin. And she wanted to um, not be denied. And I think she succeeded there. However, she doesn't... I think Treshin is withholding things that he really does know. I think Treshin does absolutely know things that... Uh, he's not sharing at this point, and we'll learn later what some of those things are. Um, uh, but for now, Sashi thinks she's won. So the situation is that uh, Sashi is on this new vessel. She's on this vessel. She's she's new to this vessel, the Gastrol. She'll be here for the next month, is the plan. Um, and she's working with Rain, um, but she's also just gone and met this guy, Treshin, who's a bit of a weirdo. Um, and she's come away from that interaction ahead. Um, all right, so we didn't quite get, we didn't quite get as far as I was hoping. Um, uh, but I think what'll probably happen immediately, we'll probably, um, she, she will in the near future, yeah, a false win, that's a good term, Oyster. But I think she will in the near term, she will meet, uh, some other, uh, individuals aboard the gas troll. I'm sure there'll be some other odd, interesting characters to contend with. Um, and I think we'll also actually get some of the work that the gas troll is doing done. Um, so maybe we'll have some kind of archaeological find. Maybe we'll, we'll have some kind of spacewalk, some kind of uh, little vessel going outside the gas troll to go and investigate something. Maybe there'll be some kind of mechanical problem uh, that Sashi has to deal with. Um, so kind of work to keep her busy. Some kind of crisis will have to emerge soon. Um, but we'll also probably have to learn more about some of the basics. Um, yeah, the next scene could totally be a meal most uh, at the dining hall where um, Sashi's hanging out with some of the other crew members who she already knows better. Um, and yeah, I think Treshin will not come to the meal, I, I expect. Um, and so they'll have that meal ready to go out on an expedition or something that afternoon in some smaller vessel, I reckon. I reckon that's what's happening. So, I think with that we'll conclude this episode of Martin Cordial. Um, thank you for voting and for, 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 for participating. It's cool uh, that we're continuing a story that you guys chose um, I think we'll continue to use this sort of voting thing. I'm not sure what we'll do next episode. I we, we I think we should continue. Um, we should continue the gastrol story. Um, because I I I, I, th I think we need to find where this goes a little further. Um, but I think we'll also do new stories. Um, a lot of the time in future. Um, and. We will add 
uh, more contributors to this list. Um, so, Steph Kelly, so Oyster um, was here. Uh, have we got uh, Hadas and Adavar? Um, uh, who else was here? We had uh, Pepper. Um, oh, the screens are awkward. Uh, Pepper. Uh, and what was it? B, B something V. We had a sort of an acronym uh, person. Uh, what are the other names? BRW? Yeah, BRW was here. Um, if anyone wants a different name put up there. Uh, oh, well, BRW is Brandon. Should we put up Brandon? Uh, let me know if we should put up Brandon. Um, 70 was here. So we'll put up 70. Um, let me know if there's any other names to add. And we will name them. Um, oh yeah, Jorge. Uh, am I pronouncing that right now? I'm, I think I might be pronouncing it wrong again. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Jorge. Oh yeah, and there are now Cordial Coins. Uh, so we've been playing around with some of these Twitch features. Um, and apparently you can now have a, a currency for your Twitch channel. Uh, so you guys can earn Cordial Coins by your participation here. Uh, which, um, which you know, is 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 pretty ridiculous. But maybe we can think of something cool to to spend cordial coins on. Um, it actually would be fun to uh, to have you guys like use coins to suggest to to get the right to suggest like a, or to name a character or something like that. Like it'd be cool to have you guys decide more stuff about the stories or or like have. Or suggest like seeds or starting points for stories. I think there's I think there's some cool things we can do. We can certainly do more votes to choose like which stories to do and continue. Um, I think there's a lot of things we can play around with uh, on the platform. Uh, oh, Brandon. Yep. We will change this to Brandon. Um, oh, and Rego. Yeah, obviously. I thought we already had Rego. I thought we already had Rager up here. Um, sweet. All right, cool. So, we've got all the names. We've got all our contributors. Thank you all for contributing to this story. Um, Oyster uses if he can use it at a brothel. Um, I, I don't know what the context there is. If there's some way that you can perform or read... Uh, this story at a brothel, I could only encourage it. Uh, and fa Fabian, sweet. All right, thank you all for participating. It's been grand. Um, I think we'll try and get this... We'll try and get this story rolling a bit further um, next time. The gastrol drawing. Uh, Stephanie has done some some really amazing... Uh, fan art of Martin Cordial, one for each episode. Um, and they are really fucking cool. And I think what we should do, uh, is uh, I, I almost want to do like a fan art corner on the stream, um, just to show off some of the cool drawings that have been made. Um, so what we could do, if anyone else has sweet Martin Cordial art that they've made, I'd I'd be more than happy to, um to show them off on the stream if you guys are cool with that. Um, and yeah, Stephanie's work is really cool. The The gastrol one especially, I think, really captures the actual feel and like the mechanical industrial um, vibe of the whole story. So yeah, you should check them out. I, I, I think they're on the, they're on the tweeters, but we'll, we'll try and put them on the, on the Twitch stream if that's cool with everyone. Um, and please do, uh, show off on Twitter or wherever else, uh, if, if there's more art later on, cause it is super cool. I also want to do like a word of the, word of the day type thing on Martin Cordial, like to randomly select a word from the dictionary. And then we have to use that word at some point in the story. I think that'd be fun. Segments are what I'm saying. We need segments in this show. Uh, so we'll play around with some of those ideas in the future. Um, but this has been a long stream, and I think it's time to 
conclude it. Um, oh, Rego's made some art too. That I would love to see that. I don't think I've seen that yet. Um, any kind of modern cordial fan art is more than welcome. Um, uh, uh, modern cordial's bladder of steel. Matt, some things cannot be depicted by. It's like Muhammad. You you can't even draw certain kinds of amazing divine. <laughs> oh yeah, let's not even. Um, yeah, asceticism. Asceticism should, uh, we can call asceticism the word of today. Um, and, and so I think what we should do with our word of the day is we should, um, read the proper definition of it. So the definition of asceticism is, uh, severe self-discipline and avoiding all forms of indulgence, typically for religious reasons. Um, synonyms, austerity, self-denial, abstinence, um... That's our word of the day. Uh, great. So every modern cordial episode, even if we don't really get anywhere in the story, we will at least learn a brand new word. Um, so yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, thank you for participating. I think we're going to end this here. Uh, we'll do another modern cordial episode in the future. Um, and hopefully we'll we'll eventually get some kind of a story done. I mean, what? how far have we gotten with this? This is, uh, this is a thousand words. Um, so that's, 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 that's a, some number of words. Um, that's, um, that's, that's sort of 1% of a full length novel, I think. So if we did a hundred episodes, we could finish a, a whole novel of Gastrol authored by Martin Cordial and all of you guys. We could we could go and publish an ebook uh, and then it'll rocket to the top of the New York Times bestseller list. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Um so we'll, we'll we'll keep on trying to write something. I think most episodes though will continue to be like a new story each time just cuz it's fun that way. Um and we'll continue to use uh audience suggestions and voting to guide it. Uh, and as ever, you can watch past episodes on YouTube, and there's also the Twitter, if you are a Twitterer, and uh, I think that's all of the housekeeping. So, so long, farewell, be well, uh, follow Oyster's health advice, it is always cogent, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bizbolt. <laughs>